this is Joe Polish. I'm in Grand Central Station in New York City where they had that this real cool YouTube clip which is Grand Central Freeze, which I think is cool. But I'm with a couple of buddies of mine. Um, and before I show you who they are, I want to point out that uh, there's two things that you need in marketing. One is the right list that you're going to actually sell to for prospects and clients. And the second is the right message. The, the best list and the best message will give you the, the highest possibility of having great success and making a ton of money with your marketing. So I've got one of the top, if not the top, list expert on the planet, Mr. Michael Fishman, who's been responsible for millions of mailings and works with some of the top direct response companies in the world. And Paris, Paris Land Propolis, which is the craziest name, but Paris is one of the top copywriters on the planet. So I'm going to first show you these guys. That's Michael, very handsome fella, <laughs> and this is Paris. And so, Michael, if you could do me a favor, I'm going to put this on my blog. Okay. Um, how important is list uh, selection and the right list to, uh, to your marketing? Well, no matter how good the copy is, the li who you're speaking to is, right? really, is, uh, is really what counts. Ideally, you want to speak to somebody that you either know is hungry for your product or an even bigger home run, people that might be hungry for your product. If you know either of those two things, you're in great shape. Awesome, awesome. Now, uh, you, you've, how many uh, mailings have you overseen in your career? Uh, mailings, it would be thousands. In, in prospect names, it would be hundreds of millions of people. That have been mailed using lists that you have exactly. helped? Exactly. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, you, you work with some companies do 100 million, 200, I mean, can you mention clients? Uh, Reader's Digest, Rodale, Boardroom, Better Homes and Gardens, and some of the largest mailings that have ever been executed in the consumer market. Yeah, so there you go. The guy knows his stuff. I did a great Genius Network interview with him. Listen to it if you really want to know more. Now, Paris, it's on you, baby. Hey. Now, uh, I, I, I like something that uh, I had this conversation with Ted Nicholas years ago where we talked about how copy is the oxygen that makes your marketing work. And you are a master at writing copy. You've written some of the most successful campaigns on the planet. We just got done with a, uh, with a meeting with our friends at Boardroom Inc., a $100 million plus company. And one of the main guys there said, this guy is the best in a particular category of writing copy. And how important is copy? What is copy? Let, if you can first describe what is sales copy, because a lot it's of people just, simply uh, don't even it's, know. Uh, it's words that you put on a piece of paper or on a web page or in an email that get people to buy stuff. And uh, it's critically important because you're going to be spending the money anyway. If, if you're spending, uh, you know, $5,000 on a space ad or if you're spending whatever, whatever dollar amount you're spending, it's going to be fixed whether you get one sale, five sales, ten sales, a hundred sales, a million sales. So it's one of the greatest forms of leverage in business. Spend the same amount of money, get twice the number of sales. Yeah, now I have a lot of stuff that I sell to like professional cleaners and to different niche industries that has already written sales copy and letters. And one of the biggest challenges that I have for novices, people that don't understand the power of copy and this stuff that you guys are both experts in, is that it matters, how much it actually matters. I think one of the biggest marketing mistakes that small business owners make is that they undervalue the importance of marketing. They undervalue the importance of copy. They undervalue the importance of list selection. And I sell, uh, to, like to my cleaners as an example, uh, sales letters. If they were to go out and hire a sales le a, a copywriter to write the sales letters that I give them that are proven, it would cost them a tremendous amount of money. And, and in most cases, uh, several hundred thousand dollars. But they don't believe that that, well, how, how you're, that's hype. You're making that stuff up. Yeah. You, what, do you, what do you charge when you're even available to write sales copy for someone? What does a world-class copywriter actually charge? I charge $25,000 just as a base fee. Just so, to write the letter? Just to show up, basically. But um, the real money for me is in the royalties because I get a piece of the action of everything that... Uh, it's mailed. Like an example, what would uh, one of your successful campaigns, what would be an example of one of your winners of how much money it generated for one of your clients? <clears throat> oh, I've had stuff that have made like $50 million for a client just from one piece of copy. Yeah, so the, the, so the, 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 the message I want to get through to everybody is just, man, list selection is critical. Learn about it. Having the best copy is critical. Any other famous last words that you would have to, to improve the, the success of your marketing and advertising and building your business? I, I have two, two final words. 
One, anybody who wants to learn copy, the best place to start is a book called How to Write a Good Advertisement by Victor Schwab. It was written uh, 50 years ago, great book, early 1960s. Easy to read, easy to understand, How to Write a Good Advertisement by Vic Schwab. And then the second final thing I want to leave people with is I want to meld the two things that we've been talking about today, list and copy. Yeah, list and copy. And everybody's heard of the AIDA formula, attention, interest, desire, action. But there's something that comes before AIDA, and that has to do with the list, and that is the pre-existing beliefs, prejudices of your audience. So before you get their attention, you have to know their desires, you have to know their pre-existing beliefs, their existing prejudices, because if you violate them, you're, you're dead, you know, out of the gate before you've even had a chance to sell them. Absolutely. So, you know, anything else you want to say, Michael? Two things. Number, and this is really about copy and positioning. Yep. Number one, remember before you make promises to anybody about anything, credibility comes first. Help people understand who you are, what you've done, how long you've been doing it, who you've done it for, and which is really about why they should trust you. Right. And then talk about what you do, how it's relevant to the reader or the person listening to the message and, and, and why they would want to buy it from you. Um, and the, uh, the other thing, remember that any service, any product boils down to an experience or knowledge or a benefit. Remember what it truly is that people get from you. Something that's cleaner or better or some knowledge or a particular benefit. Remember the benefit or the experience that your product or service provides and don't just sell the product or service itself. Absolutely. Great. Well, there you go. So that is your marketing lessons from two, it's noisy in here, but from two extremely bright guys that you uh, you, will hear. you can learn about them from uh, my network, obviously. I'm going to do an interview with Paris here for Genius Network soon. I've already done one with Michael, and these guys are filled with wisdom. And the point is, is that great marketing is applied psychology, and the masters of selling know how to take the psychology of what's going on in someone's head, put it on paper, put it on a website, get it out to the right people, and that's how you grow and build not only a successful business, but that's how you do it with a multi, that's how you grow a multi-million dollar business. So that's it. See you later. Here's a scan of uh, Grand Central. And uh, if you need to see more of this place, just go to YouTube and type in Grand Central Freeze. It's pretty funny. Bye.